Hey everybody, welcome back to the Adventures of the Pacific Pounder. We are mid-rainstorm here, and uh, we are trying to reach Sierra. It seems like when you save and then come back later, the area might change. I don't know if this is the same layout or not. Uh, we played this before, but we'll play it again and I'll start driving. The record player. You remember Francis? You play records normally, but then every now and then you hear weird voices. Like that one time it was my fifth grade lunch lady. This again. You know, the sooner I get this out of my system, the sooner you can have some peace and quiet. Fine. Hey, had a girl? Oh, boy. Hey, driver, listen. With all the legends, Jeez. all the stories that have spawned in the zone, <laughs> trust me, there are so many. Remnants? One of the best. I'll start from the beginning. <clears throat> in 1964, strange objects began appearing throughout the zone. They were uh, about shabby, cast-off things that were imbued with strange properties. Where are you? A broken microwave that froze. A broken bunny. Instead of warming it, a rusty can of paint that produced every color in existence. Always so out of place that people were irresistibly drawn to them. Yeah, you know, like a mysterious car in the forest, right? Okay, so we've heard them say that, yes. Uh, but this broken bunny, this I want to I want to know about. We heard them talking about bunnies before. I don't like this. I feel like an experiment. That's what I feel like. Like someone is playing with me. Maybe to learn about me. Maybe just in the way you see a raccoon try everything it can to get into a trash can. Why would that be? Is this a response to the experiments I'm performing? Am I interesting? Why is my car beeping? Great question. Am I a snack? These damn things chase me and they leap on cars or the field equipment we've set up and it's like they're playing. Please, Anna, tell me you're feeling the same way. Tell me you're seeing this. Nothing in nature is random. Evolution means that things in our world have function. They have purpose. What is the purpose of these things? What are they trying to do? And are things in this zone evolving? I would... Oh, it's... Okay. Oh, my God. It's uh, controlling my car. Hands only. Okay, you. There's an abductor there. Oh my god, we started off and this is just absolutely mayhem. Is this good for the car? <laughs> it makes it tougher, you know? Gives it a little bit of adversity to deal with. Is that simple? Oh, not what I was expecting to see in here. The remnants part three. I if you're already feeling the remnants effects, driver. Have you oh, I am. Fixating on the car, maybe? If only we knew where remnants came from. Then we'd have a place to start on how to help you. This is no typical anomaly. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The anomalies we know, they're creepy, crawly, and weird. Like visible manifestations. Remnants were the only ones that wormed its way into your brain. There's something much, much more. You don't say. Now, do we have, uh, did, did we get a pop-up for number two? I bet we did. Yeah, we did. Tobias mentioned that the remnants bind themselves to people, like the cars done with you, and how that led to obsession. These obsessions always started innocently. A, a sudden interest in model train sets or collecting old road signs. The objects themselves would exhibit anomalous properties, but what didn't in the zone, right? That in itself wasn't cause for more. But these fixations would only grow worse. Jeez, look at the freaking weather. Could think of nothing else but the remnant. And they always ended with spiraling into madness and disappearing in a mad chase after something. Sorry, driver, it doesn't sound fun, but... Better to know what you're up against. Could the Remnant's victims still be out there somewhere? I oh mean, my god, there's one right there. Again, but it doesn't mean they all died, right? If the madness didn't kill them, so it did. Anyway, it's been 20 years since the last Remnant sighting. I should have stayed on the road. Thought they were long gone. Until you found the car. Should have stayed on the road. There's another one. Now, I don't want to jinx it, but... Oh, God. Oh, boy. I don't want to jinx it, but we have not been grabbed by one yet. 
I feel it's only a matter of time. Okay, let me park here and gather my wits. One of the coolest things that I think they do here is like, they talk about these remnants and how people become obsessed with their remnants. And uh, it's just like us, right? Like the player, we are becoming obsessed with the remnant. And it's so cool that it's like, you have no choice, right? You're, you're, you have to be obsessed with your car because if not, you're gonna be dead. Okay, now these trailers, or this is not a trailer, this tower, we've run into these in the demo, and, oh, light replacement kit. How many breaches does it take to change the light bulb? We're about to find out. Sweet. Let's check this out. How many breach? yeah, okay. So I imagine that can just replace like a broken bulb or something. Flare gun that I have to hold. I'll actually just eat this. And yeah, this little thing. So this can convert things for us. The transmuter. Private field notes. Please find attached the installation plan of these newer compact limb converters, along with my resignation from ADRDA effective immediately. It's become the favored pastime of my peers to gripe about the youth of today, but I find myself sentimental. Maybe the next generation will be the ones to right our wrongs. Their bright-eyed, bushy-tailed optimism reminds me of the early days when we thought limb technology's potential limitless. This machine is a step forward uh, toward that original vision, where limb bridges the gap between the materials given to us and our imaginations. Nice. Okay. So this will convert uh, duct tape into, what are those, batteries? Nine volt batteries. And then this um, this thing down here either is the amount or the number of times that it will do it. So for example, I feel like if I throw two things in here, it's probably not gonna be enough. Yeah, it's just giving me the duct tape back. So we need to still learn um, what this is representing, but I don't have enough duct tape to really test that. Uh, but there was some theorizing in the episode during the demo playthrough that um, taught us a little bit um, about what that might be, but we'll we'll get there. It's just not something we need right this second because I don't have duct tape anyways. Uh, that is not where I parked. Let's use a healing item here. <laughs> they took my car. Too heavy to be practical. Well, I did say I didn't want to jinx it, and here we are. Okay, store this, transfer the materials, store this, store this. Everything else I think is good. Let's maybe make another pry bar. car's fine. Now, I could grab this energy here, but what I'm thinking is, I think we go here, we'll check out this thing, and we'll check out this thing. What is this symbol meaning? I don't know what that is, but we are definitely in party mode in the car, and I'm about it, so let's go. I think I will try to get to the road here. Just save us some, oh my God. You know what, this might be an opportunity to scan it. A can opener, yeah, that's a pretty great name for it, actually. Can anybody hear us? We're still inside the cabin. One of these things is tearing up the ground outside and it doesn't stop, it went through backs through like well, like when you walk through tall grass, like he wasn't there. Oh God, come in. Come in, Control. Can you hear us? You have to understand. They escaped containment. The anomalies escaped. They all escaped. They all escaped. So, the vibe that I'm getting 
is that these were created in containment somewhere and they got out. That's, that's the vibe. That's the vibe right now. But I definitely want to learn more. Is that a... Okay, I, you know what? My question was going to be, is that an anomaly? Yeah, probably. What isn't? Sizzling mist. <laughs> you were right. The presence of concentrated plasma particles is what makes the cloud so conductive. This isn't a storm like an electrical storm, like we expect to find in the skies above. And we do well to stamp out such colloquial descriptions. Nope. This is something else, something more intense, and yet also much more localized. I think with a little time, it'll be quite possible for us to replicate some of the behavior in a lab setting, budget permitting. God, isn't this exciting? Our research is finally paying off. We'll get tenu tenure for this for sure. Okay. Come on. Just don't have any traction here. Look at that, why? Build up some speed, some power, some momentum. Come on, push through. Push through, baby. Oh, we're gonna climb this? Nope, we aren't. We are going to go around. Front left panel looking a little bit dinged up. But all things considered, we're fine. Now, what is this? Is this leading to... I think it's leading to one of those devices. It's probably leading to this thing, right? The, uh, the anchor? Seems safe enough to drive over. Now, our goal is really not to even be in this area that much. But I'm going to turn that off so I can think in peace. Ooh, hello. Hey, another one. Okay. So do we have any of these things? Do we have any glass? I only have one. So again, not really something I can experiment with. Let's heal a bit. But it's good to know those things are plentiful. They're in a couple of extra spots around here. To slowly keep healing a bit. So those little air. Ooh. The arrows are representing this checkpoint. Oh yeah, let's go check that. What is this actually doing? A circuit gate. We've been considering repurposing the early anomaly barricade technology. We've invested incredible amounts of time, money. Uh, we've invested incredible amounts of time, money, and resources into this project, and while it may not work as intended, we still develop something that has intriguing potential applications. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about those today. But first, it's been brought to my attention that some engineers have reconfigured our prototypes to exhibit, shall we say, various whimsical behaviors. Together, we created a responsive, reactive system that is context-sensitive. Please, these things aren't supposed to be used for racing checkpoints, jack-in-the-box jokes, or visual gags. I don't need to know who has been re-engineering these, but I will need you to stop. Do you understand? Okay, there. If you would like to take a look at page three of the briefs I'm handing out, we could begin. Yeah, weird. Uh, 
There's a gate there. Now... This just popped up, this gate. Or, I, I say gate, but you know what I'm saying. The, uh, the anchor. Huh. And it's a bigger one, too. Probably more energy. Okay, let me go out here. To this place. Then I want to hit that little, um, receiver signal thing. And we can learn about those. And then I'll come back and hit this. Oh my god, there's a giant blob, though. Now, okay, remember... This area... Not perpetually stable. The area we were going to... However... Is supposed to be. But as long as I just let that cloud... Be its own thing... I think we're okay. I just don't want to be in it. Thank you. Just comes ripping through the entire building when I'm in here. What is that noise? Is that... Yeah, it's this thing. I think that's the signal that it's coming towards me. Ugh, careful, I don't want to get ripped in shreds here. Sketchy. Oh my god, you're gonna be fine, baby. You're gonna be fine. Don't you worry. I'll never let anything bad happen to you. Mostly. That's mostly a true statement. Like, I want it to be true. Oh my god. I'm impressed that you handled that, though. Not gonna lie. Let's keep healing. Okay, so we don't want to have our car in there. You can see it's immediately messing it up. Mysterious audio recording. Zone receivers. Okay, everyone, the new receiver designs are ready, and I promise these ones won't be so edible. I'm being quite serious here, folks. Last year's rash of signal-hungry anomalies, the ones that would chow down on anything broadcasting across our lower bands, absolutely tanked our comms budget and cut hundreds of us off from the outside world. The alloys we're using now, combined with the new standard frequencies, mean nothing to the chewing up. Mean nothing's going to be chewing up our broadcast anymore. Now, let's get these deployed as soon as possible and make sure it has a recording cache fitted and get those parts welded on tight. I'm not letting another one of these fall into the hands of that self-proclaimed guerrilla radio group. Who knows what kind of nonsense signals they're picking up from the outside world, or even worse, beaming out. It's all in our heads if that happens again. I can't even look. Something just happened to my car. I have the distinct honor to introduce to you the American people, a new scientific frontier with a raw power like limb technology in the good hands of true patriots. Like Was that thing there before? The potential is limitless. On this day, we welcome... Seismic Squall coming in. Very ground itself is the most threatening part. Sometimes beneath the change during times of instability, everyone and everything on the surface is at risk. Holy frick. Oh, frick. Oh, boy. Okay, so this, this is just the mayhem. Is 1955. Dr. Ophelia Turner is standing next to President Koch, the top of her head barely clearing his shoulder. She stares. Well, let's sits back. face it head on. Her hazel eyes are fixed on the glass and steel chamber in front of her. She does not appear to breathe until a ball of light appears out of thin air. The sight is tremendous. A lightning bolt frozen mid strike yeah. and the reaction immediate. <laughs> the gathering audience roars with excitement and spontaneous applause. On Dr. Turner, only a tightening of her lips indicates that she hears the audience at all. 
Dr. Turner and President Koch pose for a picture, and she does not smile even then. That picture is the image splashed across newspapers and science journals for the next decade. The mother of limb technology, they called her. The angel of a new age. The newspapers at that time laid the titles on thick while peddling the impending utopia. Then she recedes into the bowels of a government research facility. She's never seen again in public. There are scant appearances here and there in blink and you miss a promotional videos and blatant propaganda fodder. And then she Another one. and the promise of Lynn technology disappear. Okay, I didn't quite catch the name. I'm going to look that up from the recording. Okay, let's check that log. So what would that have been? Frequency file? Uh, is that what this was? Yes. Dr. Turner and President Koch pose for a picture and she does not smile even then. That picture is the image splashed across newspapers. The mother of limb technology, they called her. The angel of a new age. Ophelia Turner. Okay, yeah, sweet. Okay, so she's important. Uh, let me see if I can whip up a few gears to experiment with that transmuter. Let's see what we got. I've got five of them. Okay, so there's four slices down there, right? Now, if I throw in... Uh, how do we split this? How do we split these? There's got to be a way. Oh, we can drop one at a time. Okay, that's an option, I guess. Oh, oh! Yeah, okay. So I put one in. Yeah, and that didn't do anything. So now, just for an experiment, I'm going to put three in. Okay. It did nothing. So there's four slices there, which leads me to believe that if I put four in... No, that is not the case either. Okay. So I think this is the number of transmutations that can happen, because there's four slices. However, um, it's not extremely clear. As to how many of these you need to put in to transmute to that. Right? I'm willing to invest some of these supplies to try it. But I'm maxed out at six here, so I mean... Okay, so the mystery remains for now. So the number on the the number on the pie is not in fact the amount that you need. My theory is that it's the amount of times you can transmute there. Okay. Oh, the zone is actually closing here. So, uh we're going to get this This is now this is going to be a bit sweaty. I need to race in there. What is that thing that just popped up, guys? A payload. It's right close to the edge. I will not be investigating, but I would love to know. Handbrake. Sick. Just gonna position my car for a for an actual getaway here. What is that?
Okay, this is part of the circuit gate. Whoa, dude. Why does it do that? Why does it do that? Why does it do that? This is what I love about these games, man. You don't know. You don't know anything. And I freaking love it. Let's go. I'm gonna mark our exit here. Man, so gateway too close. Yeah, fair enough. I don't need to hit a gateway. That's not... That's not the plan. We're going to the next area. I don't want to go home. I just want to go to Sierra. Played with fire in here, and now we're getting out relatively unscathed. There is some, some damage to the pounder, but uh, nothing a little repair putty can't fix. Let's go. Amazing. Amazing. Okay, so we're going to go to Sierra. So there's a couple things in here that are unrecognized so far. Um, but there's a few things here that are recognized. Sizzling mist, bollard, can openers, tourists are there, stable anchors. Uh, we do have perpetual stability, which is nice. And then it's saying there's uh, wrecked cars, abandoned cars, abandoned squires. And then there's some other, like, truck types that we haven't seen there's like a fuel gauge and maybe a healing station in there i'm just looking in the in this section over here by the way okay sweet Oh, if you scrap a locked car trunk, it will damage what's inside. So we've actually been doing that the right way, which is nice. Oh my god. Okay. We have perpetual stability. Fantastic. Um, we have gateways that we can link already. Because we have energy, it looks like we're just under the, that threshold, but maybe just based on the angle here, if I back out, like maybe that's enough to be touching because we shouldn't be able to activate those normally. But that's cool. So, perpetual stability. We're going to chill here. We're going to take our time. We're going to go here, and then we're going to go into here and see what we can find. God, Sierra. Never wanted to think about this place ever again. Head toward town. Colossal Cappy is smack dab in the middle of where Sierra used to be. You can't miss it. Welcome to Sierra. Everyone's favorite hangout spot for activities and... Only good times. Uh, is there a reason you're driving straight towards the largest honking anomaly in the zone? You wanted to know if there's a speck of remnant energy in that car? This is how you do it. You're using Cappy to amplify the remnant signal. That's insane. Now, I am taking damage here, but it's only 2.5k of radiation. And I say that as a radiation expert, knowing full well that that means nothing to me. But it seems like 2.5k is acceptable. Come on. There it is. The other problem is, though, I don't have any more healing, so maybe I have to be a little on the cautious side here. I might have something in my trunk. Yeah, I do. So let me equip these. And those are pretty big heals as well. First aid kit. So we're going to go from 58% to, let's see. Oh. Oh. You know what? I'm also going to just do some quick repairs here. We haven't had any weird, like, tire issues, thankfully.
Unsurprisingly, the bumper is taking a bit of heat. Same with our headlights. Alright, that's sick. There we go. Good as new. I was just a <laughs> I was just about to say, oh, there's not really that many anomalies here. What is this little thing? Structure. A repair st Oh no. Are you telling me? Okay, hold on. Let's not get too excited. But yeah, this probably repairs my car and I just used all that putty. This spring has been an absolute whirlwind of work and I don't think we've ever been more in sync with the engineering teams. Our progress has been terrific and this week we had our first visit from Dr. Ophelia Turner who wanted to see some of our new designs for herself. The mother of limb tech, remember. And it was just as we'd perfected waveform stability for the projected regenerative electromagnetic fields. The result was a lot of hairs raising on the backs of necks, along with more than a few strengthened steel panels. Partially reconstituted several alloys at distances of up to six feet, which was even more than we had projected. The timing couldn't have been better. Dr. Turner's without a doubt a brilliant scientist, and it felt so satisfying to be able to impress her in person with our applications of her own technology. I really hope our teams can work together on this more, because our insights into how we could achieve better projection and more stable waveforms already have me working on a redesign. Sweet. Refueling the car. Watch the fuel gauge. Yeah. Uh, that's fair. And I... Something I have not actually been looking at that much. Ooh, yeah. Okay. Uh, let me take this. I'm just gonna see if I can get anything from this bad boy. Look at that. It's insane. Uh, what is that? Steel sheet? Sweet. Getting pretty good at breaking and entering, if I do say so myself. Another freaking flare gun. Okay, so I have a feeling that these flare guns, we should be using these at, towards enemies or to distract them or something. Lab reports. I need your help. Read through the data, look at the number. Read through the data, look at the numbers. I've checked every equation, every result. The batteries were consistent. The quality of the materials were pure. And yet, nothing on paper could really truly explain the disparity in the results. The fact is, the materials in Chamber A were exposed for longer than those in Chamber B, despite the experiment running for the exact amount of time. The same exact amount of time. Please, I beg you, I'm at my wit's end. Help me find an explanation in hurry. We've already deployed a dozen setups like this. They're already running out in the field. I fear if we don't get ahead of this, it's going to be bad. Okay. And these lab reports says to, um, if we look at them in here, store in fax machine. So, um, if we get access to that at some point, that would be cool. A little bit dark in here. I know there's an upgrade we can get to turn flares into flashlights. Repair stop. ARDA crates. Beautiful. Alright, I'm going to drive in here and probably get a repair.
Now, are these, these don't get marked, it doesn't look like, on the map, so I just have to be... keep eyes peeled kind of thing? See, there's like this little bubble around me. So I feel like if all of our stuff wasn't fully repaired... Let's see if it's actually changing the wheels. Do I have to toggle anything, maybe? Pneumatic deposit box. What am I going to do with this? Also nicknamed pneumatubes, the pneumatic tubes that crisscross the zone are low-tech. That may well be why they survive to this day. It seems the less complicated the technology, the less the zone is likely to scramble it and screw it up. Yeah, what could... Oh, I'll take all of that. Thank you. Shall we do a test? I think it's testy time. Okay, so you can see my headlight got a little dim there. The bumper's taking a bit, a bit of hit. Yeah, there we go. Okay, yeah. Sweet. That's amazing. That's freaking awesome. And when it does actually show it there. Sweet. Okay, it just kind of overlaps. So that could be a little tricky, like if it's in a weird situation like this, right? Could be a bit weird. But, uh, okay. Anyways, now let's go to our objective area. How's my fuel there? I'm at like three quarter tank. Let's let's be responsible drivers. Not much in here. Wow. Now, I'm pretty confident that over time, we will rely less on these, like, basic types of materials, right? But right now, like, every little bit makes a huge difference for us because it allows us to build things that we unlock and so on and so forth, so. Is my gas with me? Yeah, sweet. Trunk gunk. God, I love this game. I just... <laughs> I think this is the freaking coolest. Like, this is... I don't know, man. I haven't been as into something like this for so long. So all we're trying to do is get a good look out of that thing, right? Driver, are you sure about this? Yeah. Well, that'll be fine. It's not fine. Look at those radiation spikes that Colossal Cappy's still giving off after all these years. To achieve any sort of resonance, the driver's going to have to get right up against Cappy. I get you, Francis, but Oppie's got a point. Any remnant energy lingering in the car is too weak to detect with conventional methods. Really? You're gonna take her side? This isn't about sides. It's a good plan. I won't risk someone's life just so we can log another remnant sighting. 
The driver can make their own decision. I'm not forcing them to do anything. It's funny how they keep calling me the driver, like, we have no way to communicate with them, right? get them out of my hair much faster than all of these shenanigans. Okay. Let's break these cars down. Cancel that. What I really would like is a uh, like a headlamp. Perhaps when we get back to the garage, we will uh, take a closer look at some of the upgrades and make a bit of a plan for what we might want, what we're going to need for those things. Uh, a lot of it's going to be just bringing back as much energy as we possibly can. What could go wrong here? Yeah, called it. <laughs> Look at that, though, baby. Look at that. That's where we want to get to. That's where we want to be. Uh, we'll take a bit of a break here. I'm going to aim to keep these episodes around the 40, 45 minute mark. And uh, we will keep on trucking. Guys, thank you so much. I hope you're having a blast. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.